Good afternoon. This is uh, Lane Jones over at Events and Cats Foldus Financial. Uh, I'm joined today with Steve Foldus and Matt McGrath, two members of our investment committee. And uh, the topic is uh, the upcoming election. Uh, we've been getting a lot of calls from clients uh, asking about our thoughts on it and thought it might be wise just to share with you a conversation. So, Steve, let me start with you. Um, what do you make of the election and, and what have you been chatting with clients about? Thanks, Lane. Your clients are concerned. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, the possibility of a new administration brings concerns and fears as to, as to what happens. And uh, what we've done is we've taken a look historically, uh, going back over the last 90 years, actually, uh, to take a look at what's happened uh, while uh, uh, there was a Republican administration and while there was a Democratic administration. And uh, not necessarily relating to the policies of those administrations, but what's interesting is that when you look at that 90-year history, you do see that the that the uh, Republican administrations have had a 6.32 percent uh, annualized rate of return, whereas the uh, Democratic administrations have actually more than doubled that, 13.88. And when you look at what's transpired during that period of time, you can see that there were a number of events, some which were had nothing to do. Uh, with the politics of the administration, uh, some which, which, which may uh, be argued that it had, but uh, you had events like the Great Depression, which began under H Herbert Hoover in 1929 with the stock market crash, uh, moving forward to 73-74. Uh, uh, Richard Nixon was Republican. We had the uh, Arab oil embargo and, and uh, obviously not a political event, uh, but uh, uh, certainly something that grew, grew out of, of a war. Uh, and then the crisis in government caused by the Watergate scandal. And then we move on to the 80s with Ronald Reagan. We did have a, a single decline, day decline of 22% in October of 87, 34% peak to trough. 1990, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait uh, and the markets uh, sold off 20%. And then in, in the uh, 2000s, we had two events. Uh, one was the 2000 to 2002 decline, including 9-11. Uh, that was, the market was down almost 50, actually 50% at that time. And then the financial crisis uh, of 07, 08, and early 09, where the market was down um, almost 60%. So uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the fact is that uh, the Democratic administrations have had better uh, return. And what's also interesting, and, and Lane, if you go to the next slide, uh, what's also interesting is that um, the year uh, during an election and the year after election have been pretty strong years. Uh, I think it's important to note that over the last 90 years, the markets have averaged about 10% per year, the S&P 500. Um, and the average return during the election year uh, has been a little bit higher than that. And the average year uh, after the election year uh, has been right around uh, that 10%. So typically an election year, the year afterward, have been uh, reasonably strong years uh, in the stock market. Yeah, Steve, there's some good, some really interesting, you know, discussion points in here, right, which is that this slide is a great one, which is that everybody thinks you get some change of administration and, you know, markets instantly adjust to, uh, you know, a radical change in policy and the data just flat out doesn't bear it out. You know, you get decent returns on average, you know, it doesn't say every year not only in the year prior to the election. That, that actually is sort of conventional wisdom, right? That people are not eager to mess things up prior to an election. But that then the year afterwards, uh, you know, the, the returns are actually pretty decent. I do want to come back uh, to the, the slide in here, uh, which is another good one, right? I don't think uh, in, in our chats, we're not suggesting Democrats outperform Republicans, regardless of what the data says in investment markets. Um, I do think that, uh, you know, maybe the, maybe what this says is that, uh, you know, market performance, it, it lags to some degree administrations or is not is not in, in perfect proximity time wise. Um, and then the other interesting thing, and you made this point a little bit, is this, a lot of these things are maybe non-political, you know, like a 9-11 or you could argue even the, the dot com bubble, which burst under Bush. Perhaps, you know, it happened under Clinton's watch, you know, in, in, in the late 90s, right? So I, I don't think our, our, our discussion with clients, and, and Steve, I think you would echo this, is that one favors the other. Maybe it's just, it is counter to conventional wisdom that the Republicans seen as the pro-business party would tend to be better for markets. Um, so if anything, it's just data that says, I don't know if, even if the polls 
you know, we know that polls perhaps, you know, after the last election are something that maybe we can't put quite as much faith in, but if it does hold that, you know, perhaps you get a Biden victory, uh, that, you know, I don't know that necessarily means it's terrible for Marcus. I, would you agree that's, that would, that's sort of the talking point here? Uh, absolutely. And I think it's a mixed bag. And, and I think that, you know, to anticipate uh, that you get better performance in one versus another is just not correct. So it, it is a mixed bag. And I think that this uh, chart showing the history over the last 90 years reflects that mixed bag. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, another point we didn't make is, is similar to when we talked about the Clinton years and, and the, the, the fall off in the Bush years. You could argue that some of the Democratic positive skew here is because they get some of the recovery gains. Right. You know, we know that the financial crisis happened in here and then the Obama administration got a lot of the gains coming out of the deep depths of the financial crisis. So the data can be somewhat misleading in terms of this number is I don't think what we would suggest anybody to expect. Um, but it, at a minimum, it, it might uh, minimize some of the, you know, nervousness somebody might have about a change uh, away from a, a sort of pro-business Republican administration. Um, I, th I think something else that's uh, noteworthy, Lane, it's not just who wins the White House, uh, it's also who controls Congress as, as well. And as you can see by this chart, uh, where the question is asked, does the market like gridlock, uh, the short answer is yes, the, the best result has been when you have a divided House and, and Senate. And it's interesting that we do have a Democratic uh, House and it's likely that that will stay. Uh, the, uh, the Senate, on the other hand, is currently Republican. More Republican seats are up for election than Democratic seats. Uh, and right now it's, it's a, a big question mark as to which way that will fall. But the bottom line is that uh, the best results have been uh, where, where there has been a divided House and Senate. Yeah, agreed. You know, Lee and Steve, you know, what, what I'm taking away from these slides, you know, I think is, is a key takeaway is it's, it's not so much a red and blue question of what to expect the market to do better, right? As we're looking forward to this election, it's not an either or. We've seen good outcomes in Democratic administrations. We've seen good outcomes in Republican administrations. And there's not necessarily a strong correlation to, to either. And, and your last point, Steve, about how it's much more than the White House. You've got Congress, you've got Senate, and or House, the Senate rather, and you've got to take into account combination of all those forces and what's driving it. So, you know, folks that are worried about specific policy, you know, probably are reading a little bit too much into the tea leaves. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Matt, let, let me let me ask a, a, a similar question that we, we hear quite a bit about the election and get your take on it, which is that this election cycle uh, seems to be fueled a little bit by, uh, you know, a, a, a fear that, you know, we, we ha might have an election that is contested or might not be certified or we've got, we clearly are in the middle of a pandemic. Who knows how the voting process will work? And the media is, is, is certainly feeding into a bit of, of that in terms of, you know, things that could potentially go wrong. Um, how are you chatting with clients about the specifics of this selection and, and what, what volatility it might, might bring? Uh, it, it's a great question. And, and what I've been talking to folks about is, you know, don't be surprised with stock market volatility, you know, before, during, or after the election. And, and it's just something that we have to live with, you know, being long-term investors. There's clearly some different types of concerns here in 2020. You alluded to the, obviously the pandemic. People are wondering, you know, like, can I go to the polls and vote? Uh, is it going to be safe? Uh, if I do a mail-in ballot, is it going to get there in time? Is, is it going to be counted? Uh, so there's different fears, different concerns that are cropping up this year. Uh, we've got some good news in that we've been through some of this before. Uh, mm -hmm. Many folks recall 2000. Uh, it was many weeks before the final election results were certified. Uh, those of us here in Florida remember hanging chads and pregnant chads and, and all the nuances that went into counting every, every ballot. Uh, but ultimately, there's a process for all of this. There's a process for counting the ballots. There's a process for certifying them. And even as you mentioned, challenges to the results, right? There's concerns about, you know, right. will one side or the other accept the results as, as they come? And, you know, the country has been voting for, for hundreds of years. We've been through many types of elections. Uh, I, I think we're pretty confident that despite a lot of the media hoopla, we'll get through the election and, and we'll have some certified results on the back end of this and we'll move forward as a country. Yeah, it's, it has the potential, I, I think we would all acknowledge it has the potential to bring some volatility. 
uh, in the end, I do think I would agree with you. It would tend to be uh, contained to that period. And ultimately, you know, markets will get back to thinking about things they, they like to think about profits and, and <laughs> economic growth, right. et cetera. Exactly. Um, you know, I, I can tell you one of the things I, I have been talking with folks about is, you know, the, with a potential change to a democratic uh, administration, the, the, the common thinking is uh, either tax policy or regulation. I mean, those are the two things that seem to seem to be different, uh, you know, in, in the stereotypical uh, party sites. Um, I know that the tax side of it is where a lot of clients get concerned saying, oh, my gosh, taxes are going to go up. Uh, I think it's a very, a very real concern given the amount of debt uh, we're clearly uh, under just as as a result of even all of the pandemic stimulus and, and support. Um, you know, when you look at the side by side plans uh, of or the, the Biden plan relative to what we have sort of currently uh, and, and, and similarly, when you look at the market reaction uh, to having seen the tax policy, I think the market is probably seeing the tax side of things is pretty benign at this stage. Uh, and the real reason for that, in my opinion, is, is that the, the economy is clearly very fragile and the ability and political will for folks to you know, significantly raise taxes um, is probably just not there. You, you know, you can't really you, you would be shooting yourself in the foot to really raise taxes significantly in, in a very fragile economy. And that is what we're in. So I do think the markets, you know, the markets are, are, are at all time highs or looking at them, depending on which market you're looking at. And I do think it's interesting that the market, you know, we, we always say that the market is the best consensus estimate of all known information today. Uh, and markets clearly see what everybody else sees, that there's a Biden tax plan and that Biden is ahead in the polls, but yet they're still, uh, markets are still looking pretty positive and, and encouraged. Uh, uh, so I think that is sort of saying that, that there's an assumption that the first few years could be pretty benign in terms of tax policy. When you look at it, you know, I mean, you can see some specifics, right, which is the the, 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 the top tax bracket is being proposed to go back up to just under 40%. I think the most pressing uh, thing that we would have to do as planners for folks is that for people making over a million dollars a year, uh, there are some significant changes in the way you're taxed on capital gains. You know, you could go from being taxed to potentially 23.8 to almost up to 43. So, so there's some planning opportunities there. Uh, if you're a real high income inner, earner, uh, but obviously you, we've got to see what happens. I think on the estate tax side, there's some interesting things where you know there's there's not tax there's not a lot of talk about changing the amount you can exempt from a state tax which right now is really high it's you know 11 12 million dollars a person uh but there is a talk about maybe eliminating the step up in basis uh and you know it, it might change how you handle securities if somebody's really uh old and maybe you don't want to sell because you're expecting it as a step up in basis i don't know that it, it actually creates any activity other than that but there are some things in there that that bear watching but on the whole there's not like a giant tax rate increase on on the, the, the most of our clients, right? Um, so I think that it, it, you know maybe the maybe the concern would be regulation that you know industry we had done a lot of deregulation under Trump. Maybe there would, there would be a lot of re-regulation, but on the whole, I think the point uh, would be that markets seem to be not generally uh, as concerned about a Biden lead. Because, you know, it's seen as a moderate and the tax plan is not seen as potentially as very punitive. And, and maybe I would contrast that with with Warren and Sanders when they were leading in the primary phase. You know, I think the market was very concerned because that that had the potential for significantly higher taxes, uh, at least in order to pay for a lot of the programs that they, that they were they were talking about. Um, OK, um, Steve, I know you had one one other really good uh, slide that we, we wanted to to look at. Um, let's go look at it real quick, um, which is, you know, just how, how markets done. Right. And, and this really is a remarkable chart, uh, Lane, because of the fact that uh, you can see that markets over time tend to do really well, irrespective of a, a Republican president or a Democratic president. We go back to 1926 which predates the, the, uh, the Great Depression, uh, the market collapse of 1929, and a dollar invested back then uh, has grown to over $9,200 in the S&P 500. That is a remarkable uh, number and really just uh, underscores the need for, uh, for long-term investors. 
uh, mm -hmm. who have a long-term uh, investment time horizon to be patient and let markets uh, do what markets do, and that is uh, trend upward. Um, and, and that's the biggest lesson that we can learn uh, through Republican and Democratic presidencies, uh, that uh, uh, staying the course uh, is normally the, the very best thing that an investor can do. Market timing is uh, virtually impossible. And if you had any doubt about that, uh, from the beginning of the year, actually from February 19th through the 23rd of March, uh, the S&P was down 34%, the Dow 37%. And here we are, essentially five months later, hitting all-time new highs, that all those losses have been made up and staying the course is, is absolutely uh, the, be uh, the best ingredient to long-term investing success. Agreed, agreed. Um, gentlemen, any final thoughts before we let them go? Yeah, I'll, I'll toss one more thing out there before we wrap up, which is, you know, I, one of the things I'm telling folks nowadays is beware the obvious, right? And as obvious as something might seem, you know, it, it might seem obvious that this election is a major turning point or it might seem obvious that we're going to have volatility, or it might seem obvious that you want to sit, step aside until you know what the future holds. Beware of making big, dramatic changes based upon the obvious. If we go back just, as Steve points out, five or six months ago to March, April this year, it certainly seemed obvious the market had nowhere to go but down. We were approaching lockdown. Uh, markets were falling. There was no reason to think something different would happen. Look at the last five or six months. Uh, we, we got what could be years worth of returns in, in five or six months. Uh, same thing, you know, not same thing, similar thing happened back in 2016 during that election. People got very nervous election night, overnight futures were crashing as results were coming in. And by the next morning, things had settled down and throughout the rest of 2016, you know, markets were, went on a, a, a reasonable path there. So. Indeed definitely want to avoid making big dramatic changes based upon what you think is obvious because number one, it's not so obvious. And number two, the consequences may not be what you think they would. Yeah. Excellent point, Matt. Um, well, with that, I'll, I'll thank you, Steve, Matt. Uh, thanks for joining us and thanks everybody for tuning in. Take care. Thank you. Nice day.